friends we are back today we're going to be talking about estates and what exactly is an estate um i do have to go into a more in-depth guide so this is just going to be like a rough intro to what estates really are so after level 25 and you beat gideon um remember you have to be level 25 to get the rest of the optional quest that take you to get your estate um you get a couple of quests to go into your state and basically do things and for the longest from five months i would say i pretty much ignored this mission and i don't mind ignoring this i, I didn't mind ignoring it because it just wasn't for me um but back to you know the point there's different levels. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Um, I don't remember at the top of my head, but you get certain perks when you go into your state. For example, uh, now since you know new updates happen, you actually can access your warehouse. I'm trying to talk to the devs to get the marketplace and the star seed uh, exchange up here as well. Um, hopefully they'll listen. Um, maybe like link them this video if you can. Um, but with that said, when you go in here. Your warehouse isn't as massive as mine. I think you get about these three slots, and each level you get another row. So um, let's say, you know, from level one, that's it, level two, level three, level four, and then finally, level five. You get the rest of this, you know, stuff. If I'm not mistaken, it actually stops right here. Maybe this is level one, level two, level three, level four, and then finally, level five. At level six, you're going to get some more storage space and be able to use all of that specifically for crafting and what I've learned is the best method for your estates is in my opinion again this is my opinion if you want to have the correct you know type of like control of getting just all the mats and all the materials that you need uh, have the orchard and the mine but I don't prioritize the orchard all that much I'd rather just buy it on the marketplace and farm it because it just it takes too long to farm it here so right here you can actually build your orchard and um, personally for me I don't get too many things that I really use out of the orchard here that just generate in such bulk and density than my mind does for example my mind since I have all the ancient chest recipes for the most part give me things that I can use all the time um, I do use the ore I do use the stone to build more stuff uh, and I use all this like grinding stone, pyrite, and mordant stone if it gives it to me. That's all stuff that I can use for potions, for crafting, you know, uh, you know, cloth, superior cloth, and all that jazz. So when you do do your estate, make sure that you build. Um, if you ha if you're gonna go the crazy route and have ten entire estates, um, I would do five different characters with five different estates. Have the orchard and the stone. I mean the orchard and the mines and then another five characters with only mines but um with that said let's see let me collect what's inside here and every time you collect from these the orchard and the mine at the top left you can see at level five you can see that my level is actually going up higher um, it's small, uh, it's incremental, but um, it definitely uh, increases your level. So constantly collect your stuff. Here you're gonna see this is my uh, my tavern. The tavern you get at level five, five different people that you can hire on a daily basis. Um, I think at level one uh, you get one, level two, you know, and so forth. Each level you get some more stuff. And some days you get stuff from your tavern that uh, you need. And the, the things that I always look out for, you know, for my orchard, I look for this. Because I want to quickly level up all of my um, my estates. So I need construction timber. Um, this is important stuff if you want to worry about farming, you know, like potions and stuff. But I just, this, this is a kind of like a byproduct for building my estate. Um... And the thing that sucks is that as much as I want to get all these other things, this is the most important stuff and everything else just kind of came from it. And it's going to, I'm still not done. I have 10 estates and I'm not done maximizing everything out. Um, but to be fair, the reason why is because I use my estates to level up my other, uh, my other characters to level five. 
because right now I have 10 characters with the level 5 estates and they, um, the other like it's nice because other 5 characters have 3 workers on the mine so I have 6 workers, 6 times 5, I believe that's 30 so that's 30 miners that will possibly, you know, with the chance of giving me pyrite um, so that's what I look for when I put them to work construction timber here I go, make sure that you have enough gold and at level 5 you get 6 uh, batches so, you know, the higher level the worker, the, the faster he can do this. As you can see, um, here it says hired by the estate, 17 days, and it takes him 1 hour and 54 minutes. But this guy here, because he has a production speed of 3 stars, um, it'll take him, you know, an hour and 44 minutes. And another thing to note is there's actually grades too. Like, you know, this is like, you know, the gray, there's green, and then there's blue. And then when they get into like the very adept, like adept farmers or adept miners, they actually become they cost star seeds to hire because they're so good at what they do so let me put these miners to go through and as you can see here i am trying to get uh pyrite morden stone and grinding stone from these miners i am only looking for that resource and if you want to look at your labor pool you can always come down here and see who you have in your state to hire and you can see that if it has a plus i mean an arrow going upward um, that's kind of important so keep that and these it doesn't mean that it's only gonna craft that it means that that's what it's gonna focus on but these are gonna be like byproducts of you know putting that worker to work these are you know secondary things that happen for example and because I'm always mining for uh, for pyrite I automatically get extra construction stone so I don't always have to pay star seeds for it um, and if you do you know farm for like Thames they go into your state as well, and if it splits, it can be a mount. So if it if you get if you farm a tame and you go into your state, it'll become meat, or it'll give you a chance at a mount. If you see it here, then it became livestock, and you can use it for meat or cloth. If it goes to mounts, it'll it'll give you a chance so you can actually consume it as a mount. And your artisans are actually here. But actually, before I go into that, what I mean by that is here are some tames that I've actually had the privilege to do. Um, this boar, I actually tamed it, it went into my state, and I was able to consume it, and now I can use it. So, now I can basically ride around on that boar whenever I want. Okay. And now the last thing, a part of that's lasting in your state, is... Your artisans. You need to craft a smithy, uh, a blacksmith, a carpenter, or you know, a grocer, depending on the artisan that you're going to use. I like to get decorative ingots, and this is the only way to get decorative ingots, which is probably going to be a super expensive. If you're the first one to make this and find an artisan to do this and to sell it on the PlayStation 4 server or the PC, where whoever was watching this video, this is going to be worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of star seeds. You have no idea how rare this is. When I first crafted this, it was worth 400,000 star seeds, and I hope it never goes back down for you guys because when it's crafted, now that it's in my market, it is worth 60 to 100,000, and the price has completely dropped. Uh, there was an exploit, and they were just exploiting the estates. I don't know how they did it, but they duplicated mats, and it dropped and crippled the market to make them go to, to like 20k. But the the value of these these uh, very rare resources um, is exponential because they create the A gear that you're going to be seeing on the market a lot. Uh, my artisan is actually going to be right here. So if you're curious to see where your artisans go, you can craft them here. So here I put my level 3 smithy. I got to max that bad boy out. And just the same way you see the orchard and the mine level up to three workers, you can actually have more. Um, I have not leveled this up all the way, so unfortunately I can only have one working at a time. So um, I'm going to go get some mats so you can see what what that's like. So My mounting, <laughs> my taming as you can see has been completely neglected. I'm not going to level that up on this character. I'm going to level it up on my berserker because it is the fastest way to get tames for me. Uh, personally on the Zerker so because I can actually hash out mobs much much quicker all right let's see mind ore I'm gonna grab all of that I'm gonna get about half of this twig uh, all of this leather I need that okay and I have a lot of this mainly because of the set like I said you can buy a certain amount of resources 
um, from the guy right behind me as you're gonna see this guy right here every day you can buy up to 10 okay so here is where you buy all of the resources that you get basically 10 of every single day so every day until you get your stuff leveled up make sure to always buy construction stone and timber I don't need stone anymore because I have five artisans that I mean um five characters that just get so much stone for me um just just by farming resources that I just don't buy it anymore I still buy timber because that is a valuable resource to me um but let's go on to the next one let's see mine ore this is gonna cost 2,000 uh, for a stack of 10 until you get your stuff leveled up and st stone is going to cost you 4,000 so if you do the math uh, stone and timber is going to be about 8,000 star seeds every single day you don't need any of this stuff until you start crafting um, decorative materials and it's specific to the artisan that you hire um, I hear you robot boy and Damador, the reason it wasn't able to put in the artisan is because you have to hire the specific artisan for your area for example I'm not gonna be able to hire an artisan for example this guy is a smithy um, let's see his name is let's see what is his name Tris he is specific to this um, building he is a blacksmith and you need to have the correct artisan for your building for example I'm gonna go over I think it's a carpenter over here I can't put him to work here because this is uh, the tailor's cottage. Sorry, not a carpenter. So I can't put a blacksmith into this building to work. If I wanted to, it's just not going to happen. So I have a smith and a village smithy here on this character. And when I say that, I really mean that because you have to be very, very careful of what you put in. Because if you put a lot of time and invest a lot of work into it, you are not going to be able to change it unless you're okay with tear tearing down and demolishing it. I don't know why they haven't added more slots. Personally, in my opinion, you should be able to put all of your workers and artisans into one estate. So that way you don't have to keep going back and forth on all your characters. But as you can see, you only have room for um, the orchard, the mine first five characters do that and the next five characters if you end up deciding to have more character slots and speed through the campaign to you know be really efficient in terms of uh, um, crafting stuff or getting you know mats uh, make them both mines and there's a reason why I'm telling you to do all this um, let's see the animal pin comes with the estate the tavern comes with the estate and uh, these are the only two I can have, so I can't build anything else. There's decorations I can build around the estate, but that doesn't add. So save decorations last, build your buildings first and max them out because decorations do nothing except give you like labor pool, extra capacity, or uh, you know slight buffs. And um, for, on my Berserker, for example, I have a fountain that gives me a taming um, buff, and I also have a statue that gives me um, a, uh, an XP buff. And decorations that give me like more you know storage space but the reason that you want to put your estates to work is because you get all of these mats for example this can help you make your food for your dungeon runs like beef curries uh, jam pies um, tiger shrimps um, you get your meat from farming mobs or buying it on the market Don friends are really a um, good thing to have and by the way, uh, Sar Sarkod, I am not recruiting at the moment because I am on Xbox. This is just information I'm sharing with uh, Xbox, PS4, and PC that's going to be coming out in January, I believe. But the valuable resources that I have organized here, I always have it pyrite, grinding stone, and mortar stone at the top because these are the things that I need. So this stack on my server, and I'm pretty sure it still sells really well on the PS4. 40, you know, let's just round up to 50. They each sell for average 2,000 to 2,500. So just to, you know, 2 times 50, that's 100. So 100,000 star seeds per day um, on this tune. So I'm going to just store all this construction stone. And I'm going to show you guys uh, my other estate so you guys can see for yourself. Now that the decorative ingots is crafting. I know it's a lot of information to take in and it's going to take a lot of work. It definitely took me a lot of work to get it to the level that I am at today. But it ended up paying off in the long run because all of this stuff that I have here, I can sell for star seeds. 
for example, 50 Donfern here sells for 300 a piece. You know, 300 times you know 50. Do the math right there. Uh, grinding stone sells for a thousand a piece. That's 50,000 star seeds. So that's 150,000 star seeds. Morton stone sells for about 3,000 each. So that's 30,000 because of 10. Uh, so that's 180,000 star seeds, not including all the stuff that I can sell here. Um, now I'll multiply that by 10 characters. So let's say 200,000 star seeds across 10 characters. When you're done farming and getting it up to a 50 stack, that's about 2 million. Um, you know, uh, I would say every couple days, maybe like let's just average it out and say it takes seven days to get about double that. So maybe 4 million a week just off of estate materials. Um, let's see. Okay, let me get out of here. Oh, hey, Sarkod. Um, my guild is called The Band Gaming. Um, I'm going to be probably changing the name pretty soon. So feel free to join. I'm going to be loading into my Berserker so you can kind of see some of the decorations firsthand. I know a lot of people are asking about an estate guide, what to do and what not to do. And like I said, prioritize on getting... Um, your workers to craft construction stone and um, if you don't have uh, and construction stone and timber and then once you start having enough estates catch up then you can switch over to pyrite and um, morden stone and grinding stone because you're gonna need all of that to build your estates because if you don't have it you're not gonna be able to um, what's the word you're not going to be able to efficiently catch up your um, estates quickly. And remember, all of your characters do need to be level 25 minimum, and they all need to be Gideon. So you're going to have to fight Gideon 10 times to re-unlock your estates. And that's going to get you to the state to where I am. Um, and basically, there's three decorations that I will emphasize on getting first. Um, so the first thing that you do need to get is the hero statue that's cost Lumina, but you can buy for star seeds in the marketplace. So if that's um, if that's um, cheap on your PlayStation market or Xbox or PC market, get it. Yes, you have to fight Gideon ten times, so once on each character. That will help you unlock your estate. So when you first get this level one, this is the hero statue. It'll be like a, a little Ippin. And then you level up to level three, you get this buff that gives you 3% extra XP, combat XP for uh, 60 minutes. Personally, the buff is not that huge. I'm not, I wish it was like five to 10. It only lasts about an hour and then it's a 12 hour cooldown. Um, let's see. Go to the next spot. So you see if you, you can see here, this is the second thing I do recommend getting, which is the um, the fountain. It's actually smaller when you first get it, but because this is maxed out, you get your chance to capture animals will be significantly increased by 60 minutes, and the passive ability, which is production time, is minus two percent. I am missing. I am missing. Uh, um, what you call it, artisans in this estate, and that's what I'm gonna work on next. And I'm gonna be maxing out the um, the what you call it, the estate here to the taming, so I can actually see what it really looks like. But as you can see, I have a boar here currently, um, and this is the resources that he gives me, and this is what it looks like. So let's see. He gives me meat, so frenzied boar. So let me consume it, and he's probably gonna disappear when I do this. No, he's still crafting some stuff. That's a good boy. All right. So this is what he makes me. He makes choice raw meat, prime tenderloin, and tough meat. These are not mats you really need. The butchered meat is probably something you need, but other than that, you don't need any of this. What you're really gonna be looking for is animals that give you tailored cloth and butchered leather. And if you want to know what that looks like, let me walk over here to re-explain it all over again. Bu butchered leather and tailored cloth are mats to use to make um, decorative materials like you saw. A decorative ingot, decorative leather, and decorative ingots. Actually, you don't use that for decorative ingots. You use actually mined ore. These are all really important. So if any time your estate makes any of these resources, save them. 
as you can see I have in my um, storage I think I have a thousand mind jewel and then when I craft like an alchemist I'm gonna be decked out like this will make me a bunch of stuff that I don't have to pay like I have 2,000 mind jewel uh, another thousand gather herbs so I have to make an artisan so I can actually use that efficiently um, I did say there was a third decoration that I'm looking out for for you guys um, I don't know it at the top of my head uh, but I, c I can probably look in the luminous shop here let's see yeah right here estate let's see it's expensive ones we got that the fountain pool kit let's see all of these give you passive abilities I think it was just those two yeah so estate labor pool plus two state warehouse plus two HP HP soul repire soul pyre soul pyre HP HP let's see this is HP restored okay here's a good one these topiaries skill XP gain plus one percent all these topiaries give you uh, extra skill XP so when you install all three of them that's why it was kind of confusing all three of these will give you um, a total of three percent um, once you put them into your state and you max them out to level three um, well that's pretty much it this is the complete guide on estates hopefully you know all of your questions were answered and if you want to know um, what it looks like inside here you go we're gonna walk right in don't forget that if you don't see any artisans in here that you don't want to hire you can exchange them for star seeds right here um, for example like I want more miners I'm gonna press X or square or I don't know what it is gonna be on the PC and you could just refresh it at level 5 you can get five exchanges you know at level 2 you only get two stuff like that But thank you guys for watching I'm ending my video right here and I'm gonna restart my stream so you guys can watch me live don't forget to follow the socials twitch Twitter and Instagram which is the guitars 562 um, and my twitch is live at the guitars 562 so I hope to guys see you on my stream and thank you guys so much. Please don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I finally hit the 2K goal. And it looks like I'm going to be joining the PlayStation community soon and the PC community because YouTube says my estimated earnings for this month are going to be around four to $500 um, in case you were wondering what a YouTuber makes um, a month off of passive income. This is what I do for fun, guys. This is you know, my job. I do this to help you guys enjoy you know, your time. And believe it or not, out of the five months that I've done this for fun, I still have yet to be paid. And it's mainly because of you guys coming in and reigniting you know, the passion for Bless that I might actually get a chance to get paid for this. So it'll be dope. I'm actually pretty excited, so we'll see. Um, thank you guys again. And I'm again, I'm going to be restarting the stream. Uh, stay blessed, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.